Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm uh, continuing the theme of the previous video, which is all about methane rises. There's been a strong uptick of methane in the atmosphere since 2007, and a paper just came out examining the increases of the methane, the locations on the planet where it's coming from, the and the isotopic change, the Del-13 changes, which gives you some indication as to the type of sources of that methane and also the implications to the Paris Agreement uh, will be looked at. So, so just a reminder, okay this paper is open source, very strong atmospheric methane growth in the four years 2014 to 2017 implications for the Paris Agreement. Okay, so that's the paper. You can Google it and you can find it. It's a 38 page paper and I'll talk about the highlights or lowlights, if you like, of the paper. Okay, so in the top of this, the top chart is the methane in parts per billion. And what we can see, you know, it's from pre 2000 up to 2020 up to present day basically and what you can see is, is about 2007 there was an uptick so since 2007 in the last decade we've had a rise of about 75 parts per billion of methane that corresponds to a rise of about seven parts per billion per year and this is not this is going to completely derail um, any agreements, you know, like the Paris Agreement. You know, even if we got CO2 under control, this methane would take us well over the two degrees, the one and a half degrees agreed upon as safe guard band temperatures at the, you know, in Paris, at the uh, IPCC conference, the uh, COP that was in late 2015. Now, down at the bottom here, we see the delta 13 of carbon in methane. So it's about minus 47. There's a deficit of the heavy carbon. And uh, what you can see is there was a slight increase here. And then, you know, 2007, shortly after, you know, a strong decrease in, the, in that uh, isotopic ratio. Okay. Um, so let's look at the dependence with latitude. So what we have here, on, this is the concentration of methane in parts per billion, the rise. This is from 2000 to, to uh, 20, end of, uh, to, to basically almost present day. Okay, this is um, alert. This is a station at 82 degrees north latitude. This is Zeppelin on Svalbard, uh, which is at 79 degrees north latitude. This is uh, the Ascension Islands at six degrees south lat latitude. And this is at the South Pole, nine, minus 90 degrees latitude. So you can see strong rises in each case. Although, you know, when we go, when we're up in the Arctic, we're talking about, you know, this range, 1950, right, 1960, 1970. So the, the mean here, you know, is, is, is high. As you go to, this is um, Salbart, so this is 82 degrees north, latitude, alert, at the alert station. This is now 79 degrees north, so basically also up in the Arctic, right? So similar numbers to the alert station at the Zeppelin station in Svalbard. Now, if we go near the equator, this is at six degrees south. We're only going up to about 1820 or so. Okay, notice the scale here is different from here. So the methane levels are lower. And as you go to the South Pole, we're we're talking about values here about 1800 or so so even lower lower still okay so you can see as a function of latitude that the rise is much stronger 
in the Arctic. This is the Del-13 carbon, the isotopic values, and you can see a drop in each case. Okay, so this is the key figure that most of the paper is based on. So it's the sign of the latitude here and the latitude actually here. So it's equal area. <clears throat> equal area is, is covered by taking the sign. Okay, so what we see here is this is from the early 90s to 2018 here. And what you can see is this is the 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 white lines are five in, increments of five. The, the units are this is the rise in methane in parts per parts per billion, the rise or fall, depending on the color in methane in that particular region, in it's parts per billion per year. Okay, so what you can see here is you get a good indication. So recent years here, this was a very, you know, 2014, 2015, 2016, very strong rises of methane. You know, in these particular regions here, the rise was over 15 parts per billion per year. Also over here, where is it this? But what you can see here is there's a lot of fluctuation from year to year. You know, this was 2005 you know, significant drops in these locations. So there is fluctuation from year to year. This was a this was a strong El Nino uh, year. Okay, this was a strong El Nino year here. But you can see different fluctuations and you can see not only do you get changes like like here, there's methane, high methane across the entire surface of the planet you know, with the largest being in the Northern Hemisphere here and here. You know, yet you come to this year, most recently, and the methane is highest in the Southern Hemisphere in this region. So this is expanded um, in, so this is about 95, 94, 93, 92 to 2018, basically. And this is the same information but it's but it's uh this is 2006 5 4 2004 basically the present day so if you take the plot from about here here you know here just to expand it you can get a better image and see the the locations the latitudes where the methane levels are high but the it is interesting that it varies from year to year now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the sources vary from year to year. It could mean that the OH, the, the oxidative capacity of the atmosphere varies, okay? And then when there's lots of OH breaking down methane, the lifetime would be short. You know, the methane would, levels would, would be lower that period. And when the oxidative capacity is lower, the methane could be much, much higher. So, you know, also... As you go up into the Arctic, the oxidation, the oxidative uh, potential of the OH really drops off because the Arctic is much colder and much drier. There's much less water vapor, so there'll be much less OH, which is derived from the breakdown of the water, um, mostly from uh, solar radiation. Okay, so these are, this is the key graph and key trends. I suggest that you stop the video and have a good look at this. Or, you know, better still, um, just Google this paper and then and look at the figures which I'm showing you. Okay, this is showing uh, sort of lifetimes of methane at different latitudes. This should be CH4 lifetime. The, the uh, OH only lasts about a second in the atmosphere. It's created, it reacts. It's a very reactive mo molecule, it, so it lasts a very short period of time. But the methane lifetime, the global average 9.8 here, you know, 30 to 90 degrees north, it's long, the, the, the methane lasts longer when it's at higher latitude. Zero to 30, it's shorter, okay? There's lots of water vapor, lots of um, evaporation, lots of water vapor in the atmosphere, lots of OH, shortens the lifetime of methane. Zero to 30 south, even lower, lots more water, more heat, you know, hot oceans, 
Um, and then 18.6 is the average from 30 to 90. So globally, the average is this. Um, and then if you uh, take into account the, uh, this is the lifetime given, given, you know, that w there would be if it was just OH, but chlorine has an impact on breaking down methane. Some is broken down in the soils by methanotrophs, etc. So this is the mean lifetime if you include all of these other factors. So globally, 8.3. Um, high latitudes 12.5 okay so that's the basically the um, lifetime of methane now this is a uh, methane concentrations um, at with different latitudes okay and there's fits done to try to say look at what happens if the sink changes what happens uh, you know, if the sources change, and this is the del-13 carbon decrease done at different latitudes. Okay, um, this is showing um, what would happen if the, this is an approximation of the teragrams of methane, the amount of methane released as a function of year at the different latitudes. Um, and this is the del-13 carbon um, Okay, if there's changes in the sources or changes in the removal, you know, this, this data kind of looks at that. So basically the conclusions here, let me uh, bring, get my red marker here. The need to determine the factors behind the recent rise in methane is urgent. In, indeed essential if global warming is to be limited within the Paris Agreement, you know, and, you know, most people don't think that this is possible at all. We have to have targets, but, you know, we're in an emergency situation. We have to, we have to respond accordingly, and we're not doing that. If the main causes of the increase of the methane are anthropogenic, human-caused emissions, they need to be reduced. If the increased methane burden is driven by increased emissions from natural sources, these are like feedback sources, and if this is a climate feedback, the warming feeding the warming, then there is urgency to reduce anthropogenic emissions, which we can control. Okay. If, however, the increase of the methane burden is driven by a decline in the oxidative capacity of the atmosphere, this is this is a climate and this is a climate feedback then the implications are very serious indeed in other words if the now they don't mention the oceans the methane that goes you know that's absorbed in the water um but anyway the bottom line is that the the balance is thrown the earth is out of whack you know methane is rapidly rising so reducing methane emissions is feasible especially from fossil fuel sources. I mean, we've the fracking explosion in the last uh, decade or so has greatly caused, you know, increased production. Basically, when you frack, you're taking its natural gas, it's 90 over 90% methane, and the leak rates are huge, making this source, you know, not a bridge. I mean, it was talked about as a bridge fuel years ago. You don't hear that anymore. The leaks are just too large. So this is some op uh, this seeds permits optimism but not complacency okay if if we're the if we can reduce greatly reduce the leakage rates um, of natural gas um, you know it does when you burn methane natural gas it burns cleaner it produces less carbon dioxide but there's no silver bullet okay there's many frontiers in methane research Meeting the Paris goals demands wide ranging, range, wide ranging progress. Okay, so the bottom line is is this um, plot here. Okay, so this shows you. So if there's, we know that it's getting a lot warmer at high latitudes. So there's a lot more rainfall instead of snow. And that rain is pooling on the ground, creating northern wetlands, which is releasing methane. There's lots of other sources, um, potential sources, but you can really have a look at this. I could do a whole video just on this one graph. Um, and you can see where, where the methane is coming from. Thanks for